Hi, welcome to chapter 25 of First Chronicles. Um, it is, when I read this chapter and finished it, I was like, this book of First Chronicles should have just been the title for this book. I think the overriding title for this book must be Worship. I think we've looked at the book of Psalms um, because that's where David was writing Psalms and like they're so deep, they're searching through the different seasons and the things he's going through. Um, And the Psalms give you the language for worship. I love the Psalms because of that. They give you the language for worship, you know. And David, when you read the different Psalms, it's like, and I'm sure we're not so far away from the book of Psalms, so you see that when we get there, uh, when we're KG or... Um, anyone else that he she invites to lead us through the book of Psalms, you will see there's a lot of language for worship uh, in the book of Psalms. You know, when I look up to the mountains, where does my help come from? My help comes from God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And all that, you know, when my heart is overwhelmed, bring me to the rock that is higher than I. I think the Psalms give you, give you or give us the language for worship, the words to worship, the emotions uh, that must go behind worship. But the thing that I've come to see about First Chronicles, and, and that's what I see in this chapter 25 as well, I might not even read the chapter, is that First Chronicles now gives us the structure behind worship. It really, this is really a book about the structure. If I was to give a title to it, it's the structure of worship. I mean, there are many other lessons in between there, but this book is entirely about the structure of worship. Chapter 25 is all about the musicians. Can you imagine? This whole chapter is dedicated to seeing how David organized musicians in the house of God. Okay? If I read for us um, one verse, and I choose to read verse 7, um, of this book, it says along um, along with the uh, verse 6 and 7. Let me start from verse 6 and 7. So all these men have been listed, named different names, the sons of Asaph, the sons of Heman, the sons of Jeduthun, um, for the ministry of prophesying. Uh, some of them were instrumentalists. But in verse 6 it says, all these men were under the supervision of their father for the music of the temple, with cymbals, lyres, and harps, for the ministry at the house of God. Asaph, Jeduthun, Heman were under the supervision of the king, along with their relatives, all of them trained and skilled in music for the Lord. They numbered 288, young and old alike, teacher as well as student, cast lots for their duties. Are you seeing? An entire chapter is de- designated or set aside to tell us about the music of David is organizing the music of the temple of God and he's hired 288 musicians skilled to come and play in that temple. I wonder what the music in that temple felt like. You know, we think that nowadays with our mega churches is when we've gotten worship right and we have, you know, but can you see 288 skilled men were hired to bring music to the house of God. I think that this book really is about that. It's it's about showing the organization, the structures that went behind, the excellence that went behind worship. Um, it, it goes into showing the generations because these men were showing up with their sons. Um, others were showing up with their sons. sons. Like it was generations of people invested in the art of worship in the heart, in, in the in the in the house of God right um i will pick the same lesson that we've picked from before i think this must inform the in excellence number one the intention number two and the investment number three that we put into worship that's it i don't even want to complicate this and this happens at a personal level happens at the corporate level when we look at it in terms of the churches we go to Or at the personal level, when you look at it in terms of the quiet time we have with God, the moments we have with God, these three things that we pick from this chapter, excellence, intention, investment. David shows us, man, 288 musicians hired, skilled in their craft to come and make music in the house of God. Clear supervision. Some of these worship leaders were reporting to the king directly. Are you seeing that? It's excellence, intention, investment. So let me ask you, at a personal level, you have to reflect on this at a personal level. 
what level of excellence, intention, and investment are you putting into your worship? Okay. At a corporate level, yeah, what level of excellence, intention, and investment are we putting into our worship of God? Yeah. What level of excellence, intention, and investment is going into your devotion for God? Right? I think the challenge remains the same. We've picked this from previous chapters. We pick it again. Let us refuse to be haphazard. Let us refuse to be haphazard about the thing that matters the most to us, and that's our relationship with God. Let's put some level of excellence, intention, and investment into it so that we can get the most out of this relationship that is the most centering and the most core relationship that we have in our lives today. God bless you. This is an amazing chapter for me, and I hope you take time to reflect on the level of excellence, intention, and investment that you're putting into your devotion and worship of God. God bless you. Bye.